distance tonight. All right, here we go. It says we're being live streamed. Fabulous. Welcome, welcome everyone to The Word is Right. I'm your host tonight, Marissa Prada. I am so fangirl geeking out about our double feature tonight. We have Erica Floyd and Holly Googe here tonight in the house. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, we can rip it. Uh, I'm so freaking excited that these two powerhouse women uh, are here. I got so many messages saying, can, can I see the recording? Is it going to be recorded? Yes. Uh, we record these. We go live on Facebook. You can go to the Facebook page and share the stream. You can also wait until the uh, after the event and share the link to the video with anyone. And they do not need a Facebook account to view the video. Uh, we'll also be uploading this to our YouTube page. So yes, there's lots of places where y'all can see uh, the incredible set tonight. All right. Uh, so uh, just some quick announcements. Uh, next Saturday is uh, our Halloween show, the Rocky Horror Poetry Show. Uh, it's a lot of fun if you would like to dress up or bring a, a poem about Halloween. That is super great. Uh, we love that. It's not mandatory, but you're welcome to share some space with us next Saturday. November 5th, uh, we are doing Poetry in a Movie Night. Uh, poetry in a movie, we have two movies that go head to head and you vote on which one you want to see. And so we'll be showing um, Nightmare on Elm Street, the original versus Hocus Pocus. So uh, polarizing opposites. <laughs> so you get your choice. Uh, you have to be in the room to make the, to have your vote count. So we'll do an open mic and then we'll go into a movie. It is so much fun. And big shout out to Eddie Foreman for helping the live stream on that video. Uh, it is not a recorded, um, clearly it's not a recorded show. It is a quiet, um, closed space. So if you would like um, to come to Poetry and a Movie in a couple weeks, uh, we would love to have you. All right, some quick announcements here at Word is Right. Our brand new show, Out Loud, it is our LGBTQ podcast live show headed by Shocky G and Jacob R. Moses. And I'm so excited. I believe Star Child has now come on board to join the team. I'm not sure who else is on the team now, but that's very exciting. Uh, next month, they're going to be talking about LGBTQ mental health. And we have a very special guest um, this, and it's the first Sunday of the month at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, the special guest uh, at least one of the special guest features for the um, show, and it is not an open mic. It is more of a discussion forum and an interactive Q&A and perhaps some writing prompts. Uh, but we have Sabrina Benaim uh, coming to do some sharing and discussion with us uh, at that show. And that'll be the first Saturday of November. So we're super, or excuse me, the first Sunday of November. Uh, very, very excited that that show is taking off. It's only once a month. So cancel whatever you got and get your ass to, to that show. All right, um, Poets Anonymous starts in November. That is Tori Letts' open mic. That'll be Thursday, every other Thursday. Oh, excuse me, no, we moved it. That will be the third Sunday night. Uh, first Sunday night is out loud. Chanson has his haiku workshop the second and fourth Sundays. So Tori Letts has the third Sunday. We do have Thursdays open still, but we might be closing that up. Uh, we have uh, Friendsgiving. Uh, so the Saturday after Thanksgiving is our Friendsgiving show. Uh, we have a couple of our Word is Right uh, hosts. They're going to put on uh, something for you on that day. Uh, our anniversary show is coming up. Uh, December 17th will be our, our third year. Well, I mean, I guess we'll be going into our third year. So I guess that would be our second anniversary. Anyways, it's our anniversary show. <laughs> and that is uh, where we invite all the features back for the year and uh, they get to come back and sign up to read if they would like. So hopefully that'll be a star studded, uh, awesome, awesome show, including our features tonight, Erica and Holly. Uh, then we have our New Year's Eve show, uh, a, a Coast to Coast. Uh, we, will, we will be dropping the ball um, uh, East Coast all the way to West Coast, and we'll have hosts along the way to help do that. It'll be an open mic running the whole time. So we will start at uh, 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, 
and then we'll run all the way through uh, midnight after midnight Pacific and finish up the open mic list. I think last year when we did it, it was a close to six hours altogether. It was really fucking cool. So uh, yes, please come if you would like. If you're interested in helping be one, being one of the hosts to help drop the ball in your time zone, reach out to me, let me know. That would be so dope, right, Tab, right? Um, I'm glad to see Tab here. All right, if you would like to read in the open mic list, please drop your name in the chat. So far, I have Christopher Moore, Black Silver, and Shocky G. Um, Lizzie, did you put your name down? All right, I'll put Lizzie first because she was technically in the room first and I probably just missed her name. Uh, so, okay, Chance on, I got you too. All right, so logistics for to, tonight. Uh, we will go uh, roughly 20, 15, 20 minutes on the open mic. We'll bring in our first feature. Usually I bring in which feature arrived first, which would be Holly, but I realized Erica had a little trouble getting in. So if any of the features are on a serious, all right, Tab, I got you, um, are on a serious uh, time crunch, reach out to me, please, and let me know. Otherwise, uh, I will bring Holly up. For the open micers tonight, it's a small list, so we'll go to five minutes. Uh, feature readers have 20 minutes. I'm not going to time any of you. Well, the feature readers, I'll, I'll, I'll time you so you at least know kind of where you're at on your time, but I'm not going to buzz you or ding you or mute you or be an asshole or be a dick because I don't have a dick. Well, I have a purple vibrating one, which is great, but uh, I, I don't have to use it on you unless you ask me. So uh, please don't worry. I won't be a dick and, uh, and, and, and stop you. Um, but if you're interested in how much time you have left, I can definitely let you know that. All right. Otherwise, uh, Facebook, Instagram, we will soon be having a Twitter page. I'm super excited about that. Uh, who knows what else, right? Um, we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff, partnering with Gorilla Poets, uh, Garage Poets, and the Bronx Art and Fun Hub, a bunch of platforms that we're partnering with. And I do have shows open here at The Word is Right if you are interested in uh, having a show, then I would be, uh, I'd love to talk with you and, and find out a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna open up tonight. Rules, ground rules for The Word is Right. Um, this is a live poetry open mic. Please be ready for anything. Uh, any, anything uh, could be said from anyone and you just have to prepare yourself, right? Uh, you can say dick shit, fuck pussy, all those great, wonderful words. The only thing you're not allowed to say is any hate speech whatsoever. If I feel you're a threat to anyone in this room, you will be gone, baby gone, and not allowed the fuck back in. I run a tight ship and uh, we are a brave, sa uh, brave space, right? I don't say safe space anymore because it's hard. It's impossible to tell everyone they will be safe in a space that is live open mic, but it is a brave space. So if you can, uh, if you can handle that, let's go. Uh, trigger warnings, yeah, I, I don't, uh, trigger warnings are not mandatory as a fucking live open mic. Uh, but if you do want to use a trigger warning, then we'll support you in that, right? Uh, but please understand they are not necessary. All right, here we go. I'm gonna open up the mic. Uh, then Lizzie, you are on deck. This is um, for Jalen Walker. He should have just pulled over. I bet you're probably thinking he should have just pulled over. The white cops would have politely asked for his license and registration, told him about the minor repair needed to his vehicle, wrote him a warning, wished him a good evening, and headed on their merry white way. Another textbook traffic stop for a black man today, right? How many of you worry if today is your day for the cop gods to point their finger and say that one, let's light up that one, see what we get. Carefully crafted game of cat and mouse, adrenaline junkies with badges in place of hearts, bullets instead of brains came to play with the next, then the next, bodies on the ground, notches and belts, medals awarded, earth unearthed for final resting places. I bet you said he should have just pulled over. Like that was even a choice. He wanted to live and knew what fate awaited him on the other end of that trip. Instead of dogs, they used squad cars. Nooses have been traded for knees. Trees no longer the unwilling accomplice leave that to the media to display the state of unending hate. Rage, rage up. 
46, 46 bullets, 46 bullets contacted his body, his heart, his lungs, his back. Death came as a swift gift, sweat, tears, prayers. He knew he was going to die. He took his wedding band off, placed it on the car seat beside him before running for his life, unarmed. But oh, so dangerous that 46 bullets were deemed appropriate in that moment to moment assessment by sheer assholes at the helm, holding his life in their trigger hungry hands, hunted like it's 1622, not 2022. 400 years of fighting for freedom, equality, humanity, and so nothing has been achieved except the trees are no longer weeping. The concrete has become the scapegoat for scraping the blood of black men from its unyielding grip. 46, 46 times a finger had to pull hard enough to fire a bullet. 46 blasts of burning Jalen Walker fell before dying. 25 years old, a bullet for every seven months of his life. Is this overkill or just murder? But still, he should have just pulled over. I bet you're probably thinking he should have just pulled over. Thank you. All right, let's go. Let's light this shit up tonight. I'm excited. Fuck, let's go. All right, open mic list. Lizzie, Christopher, Black, Silver, Shocky, Chance on, Tabitha. Let's go. It's somewhere in there. We'll probably break. We'll let Lizzie and Christopher go, and then we'll break. We'll bring up Holly, and then we'll go back to the open mic list. Sound good? Good. Yay, Lizzie. Mm, any blessings that was a very powerful poem um, thank you for sharing that um i'm gonna take a completely different turn um but this is a two nine by nine pancus called listening skills the special skills that make up a great lover can be carefully communicated with consent and trust attentive from the first cue we catch from our partners at first sight, we study your face, each breath you take throughout whatever lens we are given right off the bat, consistently listening to how you communicate your needs and wants, heart beats through the chest, neck and wrist, how we can move together from sunrise to sunset, holding each other's gauge. The hands work their way down from your earlobes to the shoulders and the tip of your breast. Mouths caress the nipples with just the top lip and one hand continues to massage the back of your thigh. The other glides inside one of the legs. Just some of the erogenous zones in our, in our bodies, given we are all built differently. And the number of central points on our temple are endless. Tantric, the study of learning each other's foreign languages. Thank you. Let's go, Pan Q, Death Pan Lizzie. Yes, uh, Lizzie is our, uh, our, um, birth mother for out loud <laughs> oh. that's the first day to say <laughs> no it's fine i like it it's just the first <laughs> she is our birth mother and um and uh the and the the brains behind the uh, um behind the um operation <laughs> if you will it's my brain child um, yes it's her brain child and she also hosts dead pan dope the first and third tuesday of the month Okay, and her book is available uh, also. All right, next up, we got Christopher Moore. Sorry about that. Uh, I was just writing the last line of the poem I'm going to read. <laughs> so if you give me one more minute, I can probably just read it. Okay, um, so... Um, other announcements. If you would like to get on the email list, please um, send me your email. Drop me your email either through DM or through the chat here, and I will add you to our email list. Um, uh, Shaki is going to be doing a monthly newsletter to go out 
uh, to the email list with um, whatever specialty shows we have that month, as well as any fun, exciting things that are happening. And of course, you get the link directly to your email uh, for our different shows, uh, posters, announcements, events, all that good stuff. Um, okay, Tab, thank you. All right, Christopher, did that help? <laughs> yes, it did. I wrote two more lines. I'm a Yay! fast writer. <laughs> um, so I should probably explain this poem before I read it because it's very unlike all the other poems that I've written. Uh, I have a friend of mine who, uh, she's around my age, but she's been creepily hit on by older men recently to where it's getting to be not safe and I basically have been like her confidant in what she's been telling me and um, so I wrote this poem out of nowhere based off of what I've been hearing and just <clears throat> anyway I'll just read it what happens if someone doesn't feel safe oh it's just harmless play you're thinking surely it's not creepy to randomly give something to someone who doesn't like your advances. Using the veil of harmless admiration too often, no, you are not the handsome stallion you were in the 70s and 80s, so check yourself. Why should you feel good for your ego if someone doesn't feel safe because of you? That's all I have tonight. Awesome. All right, Christopher, then you didn't have another one that you wanted to read? Uh, I could quickly check. Um, Cause I mean, yeah, I could read one more. You, you do have um, up to five minutes. So, I mean, it's, it's totally okay. If you, um, if you want, yeah, to. I could read one more. Okay. Uh, this is from a manuscript I'm working on. Uh, it's called Advent of Realization. It is rare that I get eureka moments, but when a pattern keeps repeating itself, how many times do I have to be hit on the head until I finally discover who is hitting me? Those claiming royal titles inside my heart will only be proclaimed the Duchess of Despair upon the very rubble that occurs when I decide to have a civil war with myself yet again. How many times can I be reconstructed, though, if it just ends up happening again? That's all I got. Thank you. It's very true, right? And Christopher Moore, for those who are not familiar with who he is, or who it is, <laughs> uh, he does um, through the Christopher Moore on the second and fourth Wednesday nights right here at Words Right. Um, it is a phenomenal... It, it's such a lovely workshop and not workshop, uh, open mic space. Uh, and it's a little earlier than, uh, than some of the other uh, open mics. So uh, if it fits your time a little bit better then that would be a really good uh, option for the rest of you. I am trying right now as we speak to pull up uh, the, the event because for whatever reason on my phone, I cannot see this is so squirrely. I put your guys's bios up here. All right, let's do this. Um, hang on, hang on. Uh, I'm gonna bring Black Silver up and then we're actually gonna bring Erica Floyd in first uh, because she has a time constraint. Uh, so Black Silver, are you ready? Can you go and I'm gonna look and see what happens, why the bios aren't on here. Yeah, I can go. All right. Uh, can you hear me okay? All right. Uh, so this poem is called Colors Don't Lie. So here we go. You can call me black silver. That's an old black and white theater. That's an old television. That's an interracial congregation. That's a White House conflagration. That's atomic number 47. Rotten. You, you won't see the black because that's the end like revelation. All you'll see is white, like winter in the mountains. I'm black and white, like life and deceased. I'm black and white, like awake and asleep. I'm black, white, and green. Green, like old money. 
I'm black, white, and green, like the tree of life and death. I'm black, white, and red, red, like little red riding hood. I'm black, white, and red, like old fashioned love. I'm black, white, and red, like a winter hunt. What do you want? I said, tell me what you really want. What dost thou truly desire? I promise I have something the same color. If the colors match, wear them. Colors don't lie, but they hide in plain sight where we least expect them. Colors don't <clears throat> lie, but they change tides like the seasons. Colors don't lie, but they hide in plain sight like the truth. Who knew a little color was deadly? like camouflage warriors. Who knew a little color could save your life like camouflage warriors? Who knew a little color could save your life like cold blue water? But that's not the end. Color will be our redemption like water in the desert. It's time to pick a side. Will you hold on to grudges like an angry red? Or will you rise to immortal peace and love like a wild white? I've chosen my side. You can call me white glitter, the white diamond. If the colors match, wear them. And that's that piece. That's all I got. Awesome. Do you have another one? Uh, I can do another one. Okay. Would you like me to? Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. I'm going to do, uh, let's see if I can do Lean Toward the Night with, uh, without the book. I got this piece memorized, so here we go. Let me see if I can get the juices stirring on this piece. Okay, here we go. This poem is called Lean Toward the Night. I lean toward the night. I need a kickstand. I lean toward the night like triple goddess. I lean toward the night I need a prop again. 3 a.m., it's going off again. Disregard proper etiquette, because ain't nobody photographing this. Nobody filming this. Feel free to release whatever you're holding and let your wildest dream appear. Near death experience, angels fear to tread the darkness. Talking to my demons, they lean toward me like I was Lucifer. Demons leaning toward me like I was their leader. Talking to my demons like Tower of Babel, we're gonna need a bigger ladder? The dark turns me into a leader. Daylight turns me into a sleeper. I'm not Romanian, but I am a vampire. I'm invincible in the darkness. Daylight's all right, but I'd rather carry a flashlight like horror stories at a campsite. This ain't Red Riding Hood, but I am a werewolf. Wagging my tail like I was twerking. The moon plays hard to get, she makes me work for it. Adorned by her sweet luminescence after I endure harsh radiance. I don't usually do this, but the night gives me confidence. The dead as my audience. I don't usually say this, but I'm nothing without the darkness. I'm hardcore. I'm heartless. I bring the darkness. The shadows cast from a mountain. I bring the darkness along like goth fashion. I take the darkness with me like rainy clouds. Even when the sun is bright and loud, I stay dark and silent like the underground. Underground. And that was Lean Toward the Night. Yes. Let's go, Black Silver. Oh, yes. Y'all need to get some of his jewelry and his merch. It's, it's awesome. This, this guy, this artist is amazing. Um, make sure you guys drop your links in the chat so that people who aren't following you can. Um, yes. Thank you, Black Silver, so much. All right, so we're gonna bring up our first feature tonight. My apologies for the delay. I don't know, uh, I, I know that this got put in the discussions because um, I remember choosing between the two pictures for Eric. <laughs> uh, so um, here we go, but I will make sure and uh, put it back in the chat. I don't know if Facebook, I don't know. 
it's just strange for me. But anyways, here we go. Um, I'm so geeked about this poet. I met her on Instagram. I hope she lets me publish her book next year uh, with all of the poets. Uh, we have a, an incredible lineup of poets for next year. So maybe, uh, maybe we'll be lucky enough to have her be part of that. Born Erica Monique Marsh from the Crown Heights area of Brooklyn. Uh, last residence in Brooklyn was in the East New York part near Linden Boulevard. Erica left New York in the summer of 1979 to move to Asheboro, North Carolina. Left North Carolina to, um, to go into the U.S. Air Force, and thank you for your service. Left, um, excuse me, where she did one term, but had to, um, but had to duty stations during that time. One at Hurlburt Fields, Florida, and one in Europe at Zaragoza Air Base in Spain. Erica spent six and a half years in Europe, affording her the opportunity of living in three countries, Spain, Germany, and Belgium. During the time at Hurlburt Field, Florida, she met and married the father of her four children in 1990, whom she is now divorced from. From the union, three women and one young man were born. Also during that time of her marriage, she had the opportunity to live in Colorado Springs, Colorado for four years, as well as Maryland for one year and now lives in Greenville, South Carolina. She started writing poetry more frequently after the pandemic, so she's still not a baby. She is a phenomenal, phenomenal poet. Her cash app is K-Y-T-T, -T, get S paid. Uh, we will and we'll just use our imaginations with what the S is. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for our first feature reader tonight, Erica Beloit. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Um, not sure how we're proceeding. Well, how are we proceeding, uh, Miss Prada? And so I can't my get my phone to cooperate. You have um, 20 minutes, more or less, of whatever you want to dump on us. We're here for it. Oh, that's what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want, we're here for. I'm having to hold my phone because Verizon is a trip, okay? I can't even see. These glasses won't even cooperate. How you guys doing? I'm sorry, I know I look tired because I am tired. You look amazing. <sighs> We get you some here. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Thank you. You're so welcome. since uh, we just uh, like freestyling with the uh, the procedures here, because I don't know what that's supposed to be doing. I figured you would be asking me questions, but I guess I'll start off with this piece here and hopefully I can see it. Maybe I should put my glasses back on. It's been a rough day. I'm telling you, I don't know. Yeah, we're going to try this because I'm having to hold my phone because someone told me to put uh, my phone on Bluetooth and then use the uh, earbuds so that I won't go in and out because I noticed on my other features that uh, my poems weren't complete. It was like it kept going in and out. So I'm going to try this. Well, if it goes in and out, then I'll stop you and let you know. But so far, Please. you're glorious and you can read whatever you want to, whatever you want, the floor is yours. Okay. Because this one's not titled. So this is almost like an introduction. Who am I? I am Erica, not Badu, not Campbell, not Alexander, just me. To quote Ari, I am not my hair. But on second thought, maybe I am. Sometimes hiding myself, my hurts, my faults, my insecurities with camouflage. Covering, attempting to appear that I am all put together and tamed in order to protect what lies beneath. Because what's underneath can be wild if not controlled with regularity. And this is done for a specific period of time until I decide that I am ready to release and breathe. And that's when I disrobe the disguise and become naked, shedding the armor, lowering my guard that's no longer needed, at least not for now, exposing the real me and showing new growth, revealing evidence of the roots from my upbringing, my inner strength from conditioning myself to my circumstances, the grays of all the storms I've persevered through 
and the colorful ways that I've tried to cover up my past hurts, finding and spreading joy to spite my reality. Because in essence, I can control my reactions with straightening my responses when I can't control what comes against me. Embracing a renewal of self by cleansing away all that have tried to destroy my joy, my character, aligning and anointing a more righteous path, preparing to rid myself of unhealthy entanglements, as well as loose, brittle ends that could break me, leaving me damaged if I hold on too long, ultimately rewarding me with curvy spirals of peace and healthy restoration. No more pretense of relaxation in past, but with focus and positive purpose lined up evenly until I need my protective armor again. Home. Let's go, Erica. Thank you. <laughs> yes, y'all don't even understand, but you're getting a taste of it. This this woman is amazing, and um, yes. you are so sweet. You are so sweet. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll go with this newer piece. Thank you, Christopher. I appreciate you. You're amazing. Writing poems right before you're supposed to speak. <laughs> that was a trip. So let me see here. Do I have the complete? Okay. So the next piece is, um, I have wrote this recently in the last few weeks. I had titled it New Wine. Maybe I should take off my glasses. Maybe I can see better. I can't even... Y'all just don't know the struggle. <laughs> okay. Throughout my life, I have traveled to many a destination, made great efforts in preparation for those excursions, not really sure what the expectation would be, always hoping for the best, more than just I survived on this test, just hoping that my careful planning wouldn't be lacking. But more often than not, I end up overpacking, bringing an assortment of past hurts that stayed hidden in the back of the closet, thinking that I would need to put on mistrust, lack of faith, and I thought as much, just in case, packed in old baggage that should have been given to Goodwill or perhaps Miracle Hill. I'm still trying to wear some of those outfits knowing deep down that they're never going to fit in my current state. So why do I hold on to them like it's fate? Why weigh myself down with a tire that is no longer in season? There's no justifiable reason except to say it was a habit I grew comfortable in. But the word says you can't pour new wine into old wine skin. So the only option is to give myself time to plan better, to get myself together, get appropriate attire for the weather and buy new luggage, ridding these with torn leather because carrying around that baggage was wearing my nerves thin. So with that, I'm determined no more new wine in old wine skin. And that is that piece. <laughs> okay, let me see. Let me see, go to this one. I'm probably not gonna take the whole 20 minutes. <laughs> Doing these things still make me a little uncomfortable. There's no <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. The next piece. It was also a prompt from impromptu. Everyone knows, but nobody knows is the title. God, I look tired. I almost want to put my picture up instead of looking at my real self. No, right no, now. no. Because I know I can do better. Y'all, <laughs> Erica, you look great. You look beautiful. You look God, great. I look. 
high or something. Anyway. No, no, no. <laughs> Perfect. Don't worry. You're you're fine. I promise. Okay. We'll go ahead and read this one. Or I'll try to because I took my glasses off. Everyone knows, but nobody knows that we have feelings too. That we feel pain just like they do. That we've dreams and goals for our children in hopes they'll pursue. But even though we have media, they pretend not to have a clue of the senseless killings all due to our hue. Everyone knows, but nobody knows the trouble we've consistently seen. The nightmare of our children being killed in our dreams. History repeating these horrific scenes of the law ignoring the victim screams, perps walking away with their records clean. Everyone knows, but nobody knows the storm that is yet to take place. That we are tired of the blatant disregard to our race, tired of our contributions being erased, our history almost non-existent without a trace. We are tired of the lynchings all up in our face. Everyone knows, but nobody knows the innocence imprisoned behind bars. What a resourceful people we really are. Multiplying, surviving, yet we made it thus far. We are as infinite as the stars, unaware that they are the very cause that will eventually provoke an all and out war. And that is that piece. Let me see here. I'm gonna change the tone a bit. I think I will go, let me see, I'll go with this one. Thank you. Let's see here. I think I got two poems together and I'm not supposed to. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Prada. Let me see here. Three pages is this one here. No, that is three pages. Okay, I'm going to do this. I didn't have to hold this phone. I think I'd have everything together. Now, this one is not titled. It was written to a prompt. Of a man coming up out of water is supposed to be an erotic piece, but I'm not an erotic writer, really. I think I write more sensual if I can write close to that at all. So I'll just, I'm hoping this is all in order. If you want to get my attention, it will have to be well earned. So class is in session in hopes that you will learn and retain the lesson. The syllabus will cover most importantly, what stimulates my brain. It's a scientific fact that it is the largest sex organ that our bodies contain. It was imperative that I make that part plain so I won't have to go over that again and again. So I'm sure you will agree to achieve complete access to my body. You will need to pay close attention to me and my non-sexual needs. Mental stimulation is the pinnacle of foreplay that satisfies me. My libido is a bit complex. It requires extensive work to get that fix. So it will dictate more than a Dennis Haysbird, Teddy P voice to get me more than Duncan Hines moist. Just trying to help a man out. Since you don't have much of a choice except to heed to what I need. So much is given, much is required. My objective is to equip you so you can succeed in fulfilling my desires. Simply put, ease my burdens when I'm tired so I'm not exhausted when you need me. T. 
take genuine interest in the things that matter to me. Don't just hear when I speak, really listen when I share. That will demonstrate to me that you really care. Observing that you're attentive to what I'm into, I long to discover. Being my unwavering support, my motivator. Something as simple as cooking and cleaning for me motivates me like you wouldn't believe. I will surely demonstrate it's better to give than to receive. And lastly, you must be receptive to praying for me as well as praying with me. So in order to pass this course by a landslide, not just physical interaction, but mental stimulation will have to coincide. And that is that piece. I bet AJ Houston was like taking notes. Like I could just see AJ right now while you're reading this, like, wait, wait, hold on. Let me, I'm gonna learn this. She gonna quit me. Like, <laughs> is AJ in the building? No. <laughs> okay. No, I did send him the link. Uh, okay. Just so we're clear, I did send him the link, but be being that you had written earlier to an impromptu, this wasn't an impromptu prompt, was it? It was. Was this one the impromptu? They, yeah, it was an acrostic of a man coming out of the water. <laughs> it's kind of like a wet words type of inspiration. And I was tagged. <laughs> so I said, okay, now you guys already know. I can't get down and dirty like you do. No. You no, know, so this is what I do. <laughs> but it's sexy, right? It's very sexy. And erotica isn't always about um, the, obscene, oh. right? It's just what brings you pleasure. Uh, and, but I can Absolutely. Imagine. Cooking and cleaning definitely does it for me. <laughs> and that's valid, right? Acts of service is a love language, let me tell you. Hey. <laughs> hey. So I'm gonna so, come cook and clean up in my house. I'll probably be more likely to fall in love with them too. All right. Anyway. You think? You think? I'm telling you. Anyway, I'm telling all my business. Let me stop. Okay. So I guess I will read this next one. This was also, you know what? A lot of my poems are impromptu. I guess I just put in a plug for impromptu whoever's on instagram y'all need to follow that page whenever you need inspiration to write something that they always have prompts every day okay so let me see here i'm gonna do this one here this one i titled love's masterpiece may i ask something of you will you be patient with me i've been through so much you see with each trauma, I've managed to survive, yet I'm broken inside. I have managed to conceal the past pain I feel, but with you, I no longer want to hide. It's not fair to burden you, yet I make this appeal. Will you be patient with me? Cause the chance at love is real. And I want and need to heal. Your beauty inside and out is what I've longed after. It is as pure as God's laughter. I feel it in my spirit that you're the bomb to make me better. Will you be patient with me? Give me some time to get myself together. In case you haven't noticed, the wall I've created is cracking at the surface. Your nearness chipped at my broken facade, hoping to uncover love's masterpiece. Your very presence, the breakthrough for my peace. You are beauty and I am beast. So please be patient with me. Oh. 
Yes. Let's Love see. That. Let's see. And I guess I'll just read God because I want to read all my poems. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll do this one last. Let me see here. This one I wrote in 2020. And hopefully I got all the pages. Do I have them all in order? Yeah, I think I have them all in order. I'm sure I got it together. Yeah, I think I got them all in order. For lack of a better idea, I named this or titled this Missing My True Love. Loved you all my life. How could you do this to me? Have me crying out for you as if in infancy. Struggling, begging to continue intimacy with you. Racking my brain into no avail. No comprehension of why you put me through hell. Angry, lost, not able to tell why I lack your attention when asked, I fail. To explain why you don't spend quality time with me. You see, I get a portion, a small part of you. Doctors recommend that I spend a third of my day with you, at the very least. Tried so very hard not to blame you for leaving me for so long. I was looking deep into myself since they say I must have done some wrong in some way. So many times you led me astray, thinking you were here to stay, but yet you elude me day by day. Because of your unwillingness to spend the time necessary, he has replaced you every night like the cliched married man with the secretary to the dismay of the wife. But in this, I'd rather have you continuing to be part of my life. But now you left me with no other choice but to hang out with insomnia who has a strong voice, voice so influential, he prohibits my potential to achieve the goals that are essential for me. Sometimes I'm late for work. Sometimes my brain delays and this dismays the plans that I've made with my tongue, with my thoughts, with my efforts in every part of my existence, still persistently pursuing you with persistence, still teasing me with your essence, which is why I haven't given up still optimistic that we will be reunited. That hope, that wish keeps me excited. Not sure if I failed to mention because of your lack of attention that insomnia became my side piece, even though that was never my intention, but your neglect of me has been a point of contention, having me in a place of detention. Even though he has been more loyal than you, I am still craving you, feeling that he doesn't deserve my betrayal for you. He's been hanging with me well, but I'm so desperate to have you in my life, can't you tell? I have been seeking other avenues trying to get you back, imbibing spirits in hopes of drawing you back in the sack, you two playing gentle rain, because of your absence to mask my pain in hopes you would return and sustain me. Adding the hum of the fan, thinking that would help. But damn, that doesn't always work, you see. Using meds or melatonin, and that was short-lived. So desperate, there wasn't anything that I would give viewing things I have no business viewing, resorting to self-soothing just to be in your presence or draw you back to me, baby. 
how I miss you. My peace, my comfort, my dear lover, my sleep. And that is that peace. Oh my God, Erica. Yes. Let's go. And I can step away and let Holly you got step I mean, in or whoever. Want, you said you were what you wanted to finish with a certain poem. You can totally finish. You're like, maybe I'll finish. Finish with what? Your with what? I've read, I don't know how many poems. <laughs> I'm confused. I was <laughs> messing with, I think, Christopher. Oh. <laughs> yes. Well, like, I do have a question, if it's possible. Yes. Um, could you? Could you put the um, IG prompt page name in the chat? Because I tried finding it on Instagram and I couldn't find it. Oh, yeah, because they spell it. They spell it a different right there, way. She oh, she. OK, I thought it was spelled T-O-O at the end. The I may be wrong. I, I may be wrong. Impromptu, we going to figure this out. Uh, yeah. I, since we're live and all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's T-O-O. So it's M-P-R-O-M. P T T O O. So at M or T O O, something like I think it's one T. You know, the yeah, oh, but right. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Prada. What were you saying? Just they're being smart asses, is what they're doing. <laughs> so it's because this last piece that was all me because I was going through insomnia for the up team time. Yeah. I don't sleep well at night. So I said, you know what? I might as well try to write something. <laughs> so that's what that was about. This was one that was not an impromptu prompt. This was me. So, um, but um, I appreciate you guys, uh, your patience and sitting through my work. I really do. Thank you so much, Prada, for making me always feel so welcomed. Thank you so much. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for our first featured reader tonight. Thank you. Ms. Erica. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you so much if you would like to find erica she is on <clears throat> she's on instagram um and her her ig handle is b k l y n n d a h s e um all of that is on the event page at word is right so all you have to do is go to the word is right's facebook page uh, all of her, her bio, her links, everything is there. Her cash app is KYTT gets paid, uh, KYTT G-E-T-S-P-A-I-D. You know, sometimes, um, you know, when we're, when we go to see, uh, we go to see a show, they have the hat that goes around and we want to put some tips in the hat. And, and sometimes we feel like I can't pay $10 every week. It's so much money. I don't make a lot of money. And we feel like we have to do a lot. Uh, but if all of us just do a little bit, it is a lot. Uh, so sometimes just doing a little is everything. You know, buy her a gallon of gas. We used to say buy her a cup of coffee. Buy her a gallon of gas, right? Put some gas in her car. She is no longer in New York City. She needs, she needs some gas, right? Uh, there's 15 people in the room. If everyone drops, you know, three or four bucks any, or, or two dollars, right? Uh, just don't do nothing. Just put something in their cash app, put something in the vendor for Holly. Uh, that will, will go very far. If you do not have cash app, reach out to me. I have PayPal. You can PayPal us. I'm sure there's another team member who has Venmo that if you don't have um, anything but Venmo, we can uh, definitely forward on tips to our featured readers tonight. Uh, also snail mail, carrier pigeon, firstborn, whatever. There is zero excuse not to pay these features. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'd rather not send Erica Floyd money rather than send her $2 because it's fucking cheap. You're fucking wrong. Because if everyone who said that actually sent her two or three fucking dollars, she'd be a lot more rich than she is now. And her car would be full of fucking gas. So just don't do nothing. That's the moral of the story. Uh, everyone pushing everyone up. Uh, the, the motto, right? My motto for this platform is if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. It's an African proverb. It is the, the backbone of this organization. And so just don't do nothing. Right. Um, <clears throat> all right, good. Holly has catch up to you. Very good to know that because I will add that to your bio. 
We're going to go back to the open mic list now. Welcome, welcome, all of you who are coming in the room. Uh, if you would like to get on the open mic list, just drop your name in the chat or send it to me and I will uh, get you on the open mic list. Uh, the list reads, Shocky, Chance on Tab, and we will bring up our second reader tonight, uh, Holly Googe, who is googely gorgeous and amazing. And I'm just so excited. Like, I'm so fucking fangirling for today, y'all. You don't even know. Um, I'm sure Erica's like, wow, Pro Prada, I don't know why you're fangirling. I'm just, it's just me. And I know that's what she's thinking. Uh, but that's okay. She doesn't know how great she is yet, but she will. Uh, and, and she's pretty fucking phenomenal. So please, please follow Erica Floyd and uh, Holly, as you'll hear from in a little bit. Shaki, are you ready, my friend? Sure. And as I mentioned, Shaki is um, the co-host for Out Loud, the podcast live show the first Sunday of the month with Jacob R. Moses. This coming month, they have uh, Br uh, Sabrina Benaim uh, as one of their guest panelists. So do not miss their show. They're fucking incredible. Chance on you're on deck. All right. Um, so this is an older piece. I'll do two pieces, but this is an older piece called For the Boys. Some boys have no time for crying wolf. They cry out in pain, cry out in silence. A pistol with its bullets stifled to conceal its crime. Boys become men who swallow their feelings, pushing it deeper until it sits in the groin. No wonder it's seen as a no wonder crying is seen as a loss of manhood. Boys are told to man up, so they go. <clears throat> sorry, my cat's in the way. Boys are told to man up, so they rush through puberty, swallowing the ache of growing pains, regurgitating trauma, because hurt people hurt people even when they aren't trying, even when that person is themselves or the one they love. Pain is never palatable, but it's always on the menu. Imagine if boys were fed love and understanding more than they were fed lies. They were given blankets for comfort rather than to act as a cover. If boys became men who truly loved enough to say they loved before it was too late. Where I love you sounds like a promise instead of an apology. Where boys will, 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 bleh, where boys will be boys is not an escape from accountability, but a declaration of safety and trust because boys will be men and their legacy needs to be more than a trail of broken hearts and homes. So this one is for the boys. Let this be a eulogy to tradition, a wish that you are loved beyond, without boundaries, without conditions, so much you reciprocate it in every action you care to take, a protest to what it means to be masculine and knowing toxicity has no place here. For the boys willing to stand on front lines because they're tired of fighting battles they aren't meant to be won. For the boys who will soon be men, strong enough to wear hearts on their sleeves and ready to teach others to do the same. Okay, and then this oh, is a piece. I just gotta say, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And then this is a piece I wrote in a workshop the other day, it's called Blue. They say blue lives matter as if a blue uniform isn't just a disguise for hatred as if they can't peel off the layers of their costume and blend back into the crowd. My life has always been skin deep, unable to hide my heritage from trigger happy cosplayers who pretend shooting unarmed persons is justice. How can you be at war with someone who isn't fighting back? I've seen my brothers don the costume themselves. So change comes from within. Forget that black and blue comes with pain. Just another bruise to their ego. I wish it were as simple as mixing colors into the pot splashing it on a canvas to create a brighter future, but the, when the ones meant to protect and serve only attack and take, fear is the only legacy they leave behind. Sorry, I don't know why I was stumbling so much today. I'm kind of tired. No, don't apologize. Never apologize, because uh, we, are, we, we are here absorbing your word, and that is nothing ever to apologize for, Shocky. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for Shocky G. Why wow, so I strong? Pray. It was great, right? I pray I get to publish her book next year as well. Can you imagine just these two women being on any sort of book launch? Like what? And Tab, Tab's coming up, right? Um, and Tab and I have talked about a book. Like, can you just imagine? Uh, let's go. Uh, <laughs> like it's it's not stopping but seriously so shocky that line a uh, eulogy to to tradition can we do a workshop on that titled 
eulogy to tradition. And I think that's a fucking brilliant workshop concept. Um, so put that in your back pocket because I think that that is a phenomenal concept. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I, we're surrounded by greatness and I, I love it. It inspires me every day. All right, Chance on your next, followed by Tab, and then we'll bring up our second feature, Holly. All right, um, so I have nothing but haiku to share. Haiku, my apologies. Wrongdoings are never right. Please, please forgive me. Haiku, the sky is falling. No, that's just Putin's hubris. Ultimate downfall. Haku. Nerds are hot. Trivial info make nerds smile. Oh yeah, I wrote nine um, haku as Erica was reading. So. Um, so I'm about to read some of those. The color of love fulfilled promises shaded. All colors are here. Haku. Slithering, clothed in protection, I can fly. Um, Haku. Cusp of lawlessness, bullets become the new rain, low chance of stopping. Um, God's little blessings. Can't wait to spend time with you, but where's your mother? And one more. I wish I knew that one by heart. I really do. Um, okay. I'd like to thank oxymorons are simply teenage morons in need of oxypads. And I'm simply glad I was once an oxymoron. Thank you. Bro, can you read that bullet one again? See the bullet one again. Okay. Cusp of lawlessness. Bullets become the new rain. Low chance of stopping. Fire. Thanks. Right? Sh Shaki said the things you do with 21 syllables is damn true, right? Um, 22 syllables. 22 syllables. All right, well, let's keep going. Um, if, for those who don't know, Chanson has uh, Hear Me Coo, which is the second and fourth Sunday of the month right here at The Word is Right. Uh, it is a haiku workshop. He is on his way to break the Guinness Book of World Records for most haiku. Who the hell would set him up with that challenge? Uh, they must be crazy. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, he, 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 he graciously accepted it. <laughs> so... Uh, we're just uh, we're just observers at this point. All right, Tap. Oh, my beautiful friend. I'm so glad you're here. It's so good to see you again. The floor is all yours. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you for the space to the previous poems. You guys are fire. Um, spoken word is my, my first love. All right, so I'm going to go into it. Let me just open it. Here we go. You guys to see me? Perfect. I page of words reflect the wounds that lead me to a path of self-neglect. I wake up, roll over, scream at God, and wish for a new life. He must be so sick of me. There was a knock at the door. I open to find a man who says nothing. The silence of a man usually confuses me, wondering what scars can be delivered on this bright Sunday. Tall, Spanish, dark eye with a tightness to his jaw, I knew something was wrong. He searched every corner of my home without movement or my permission. Where is he? I don't know, he doesn't live here anymore. I had never seen this man, but better than I to ask him who he was or who the fuck he spoke of. I knew, I knew this had to be brought forth by a man that drags the heart of me while I kicked and I scream, leaving me to look like I lack sanity. He turns the corner, unzips, and spreads. 
leaving babies hidden underneath the breath of yet another. Blessings, trans siblings that are never spoken of. The same man yells, I love you, while he drags the pain of me yet around another corner, taking on every woman he dares to spread, leaving my name to slither. Learning the bones you choke on, you shape me. Shape the appearance of a woman I've never met. Pride, self-respect, and love a little lost. I view her abandoned by the same cycles. The same people that watch me grow for the strength of single hands. A woman that knows no breaks, now watch me fall. Fall for a man that has made me the scars to his wounds. The outlets to his pain, the markings to his bearings lead me to heal. Don't I know better? Wasn't my hero a reflection of the same, choking woman by the strings of his imperfections, leaving me a sibling that's only known by the spirals of our DNA. I hold her picture to the world daily, as if viewing the young girl she grew from allows me to get to know the woman she's become, but it doesn't. Connections that were lost were never built. Flashbacks of feelings I wish on no woman, Days I cried so hard, my unborn child gathered itself in knots, striking me with the same pain I passed down to him. The silence of a man usually confuses me, wondering what scars can he deliver on this bright Sunday. He lifts the right of his shirt and shows me his gun. My son, who barely has the experience of walk, holds the back of my leg, knee high, not even two. I find phone and ring morning, silently praying for the day he no longer returns and peace. Let's go, you guys unmute your mics. Give it up for Tabitha. <laughs> Tabitha. <laughs> and just jerking your chain, uh, haikus are 17 syllables, 575. So for all of you who can't count and didn't catch that, well, <laughs> now you know. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to turn uh, turn things over to our second uh, featured reader tonight. That I am now out of, I was just listening to Tab and I lost, I lost my Facebook link. So let me pull it up real quick. And while I'm doing that, um, since Holly enjoys haiku, uh, I'll share a quick haiku with her because she gives you so much fun. I hope my video is not too choppy because my computer is just super old. Anyways, uh, all right, so haiku. The only reason you're mad now the queen's dead because Dick's back in charge. Yep, that just happened. <laughs> so yeah, if y'all had not thought about that yet, Dick's back in charge for like a lot of generations and shit. Uh, so yeah, thank you, no thank you. But that's where we're at. All right, so Holly Goose is, is just amazing. I had the opportunity to meet her online, and she uh, and Erica both were part of our Juneteenth um, special feature show this year. So I'm so excited that they're back for their fully well-deserved set. Uh, I, I'm sad I missed you in New York City when we were there for the Poetry Festival, but next time uh, you definitely have to come out uh, for the Poetry Festival. And if you don't have a book out yet, well, then we definitely should talk because if you want to be collaborating with these fierce people for next year i have my list is open so just let me uh let me know all right originally from brooklyn new york holly Gouge is a performance artist and creative writer holly is a proud uh, alum of the fame school and a graduate of the university of maryland in baltimore county where she studied dance and french we oui, oui. holly has worked in various capacities in the performing arts including arts administration musical theater television and live stage. You can find her on Instagram at Holly Gouge, that is H-O-L-L-Y-G-O-O-G-E. Same for Twitter. You can also find her on YouTube, Dancer874. Her Venmo and Cash App is Holly, H-O-L-Z, the number seven. Uh, unmute your mics, please. Give it up for our 
fiction reader tonight, Miss Holly Goosh. Woo, 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 woo. Yes, more Brooklyn. 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 Yes. Brooklyn. Oh, wow. 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 I'm going to I'm going to go back to gallery because this is very OK. <laughs> Marissa, I got to tell you something, though, before I start. I was not expecting that haiku to go in that direction at all, but I'm here for it. I loved it. I was like, where did she go with this? What, what, what's about to happen? <laughs> what's going on? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so I will start with um, this piece. It is called Redefined. I am not defined by my sexuality, experiences, or lack thereof. My worth and value do not waver in the face of potential love. I woke up today and got fresh, rocking blue jeans, high donut bun, mesh, gazed at myself in the mirror and took in my rich, beautiful figure. I love the idea of what I could be, nothing less than the best, just shy of a crazy fantasy. I see my potential and in it, I believe. Strength in my form, brilliance in my eyes, sowing seeds of peace in this world as it rocks in deep anguish and cries. Grace in my moves, fullness in my soul, the audacity to believe in living life whole. I am the daughter of the sun, radiant like the moon, Sweet as ripe, juicy fruits, grounded like an oak tree, standing tall, insightful, authentic, and unapologetically so. My heart beats in sync with God to the rhythm of our own unique song. No longer will I shrink back in shame. I refuse to be stagnant and remain the same to dim my light, which shines bright, or settle for less than what I deserve. I woke up today and I decided that my voice would be heard, that I would be seen because God made me and I have a divine right to be. Time is moving and that's no illusion. No longer will I be elusive to the call of his spirit. We will align and compose a score of highs and lows to the motion picture of my life. No more inner strife. It is time to make wrongs right. It is time to take flight. Perfectionism? <laughs> no, that's not for me. I'm not killing me softly in the night breeze. I lean not on my own understanding. I trust in him with no reprimanding. Spirit of G-O-D flies true and free to bring forth all that Yahweh ordained through me. And the ancestors giggle <laughs> with glee because instead of society, I chose me, Ashe. And that's my first poem, Redefined. You can catch the visual to that poem on Instagram. So check it out. Boom, boom. Okay. Hey. <laughs> my next uh, piece is called New School Addiction. Wake up in the morning craving a hit of that blue light drug, that virtual shit. New updates and alerts galore. Give me a rush I can't ignore. Who viewed? Let's see. Who is posting real shit and who is fronting on IG? It's all a dream, a colorful highlight reel fantasy, an apocalyptic filtered time machine. This ain't real life, it's a digital sport. I pick up my phone, open up the screen, swimming in the Kool-Aid, ignoring missed calls while scrolling through the seemingly perfect machine and ignoring my tainted reality. I get high off likes and comments, snort Instagram and smoke Twitter for breakfast, shoot up TikTok when I crave a tease like edibles eaten on New Year's Eve. Amused by poor fashion trends, stories and friends and captivated by images, no, reels, with captions that never end, hashtag health. My mind goes in a haze, losing track of the ways I can be better. And instead absorbing the trends proclaimed by trendsetters and influencers, whose audiences is bought by bots and apps and recycled messages. Where's the authenticity in that? 
Remember the good old days before TikTok challenges became a craze? Remember the time life was simple when the only concern was the pre-prom pimple? We played board games, cards, and manhunts outside. Watched the news during dinner, had real life FaceTime. We knew our neighbors, classmates and friends, kind to the quiet ones who sat on the table ends. We left aim away messages, the blueprint for subs with emo lyrics, bright colors and bootleg emojis. Now that's a dub, but who cares? Now we have more ways to communicate. No, 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 emotionally manipulate. We screenshot and scroll to catch folks in lies, assert unwarranted agency over the status of people's lives. Keep in touch with friends and family, cyber lurking on the side, and write messages to those whose lives are forever memorialized. With so many platforms, there's so much more room for mistakes. And despite all this access, something within me still aches. 30 seconds morph into 10 minutes, flip into 30. And the next thing I know, half the day is gone and I've lost track of my glow. Like I've got something to prove, feeling FOMO, trying to beat the algorithm, which changes like Tetris to promote my brand while trying to keep up with the latest trends, but instead find myself drowning in quicksand. I've tried to quit and take breaks legit, but like nicotine, I'm drawn back. Scrolling gives me ease from life's ugly realities, but it plays on my insecurities. And sometimes I'm triggered. Actually, a lot of times I'm triggered when witnessing the silence from those who ignore or better yet, show compliance towards issues of race, civil rights, equal pay, and the right to choose. Not to mention cancel culture makes me feel like I'm living in a cartoon. And what gives? This shit ain't real. It's fake and one-sided. I don't care how you feel. Our posts now belong to the world of cyber. We don't have ownership just scrolling through bullshit. Erasing posts is irrelevant to the web's resurfacing fibers. But it's too common, and I've lost too much time on this vice that doesn't cost a dime. Totally legal and resourceful at best while costing me time that will never reset. And that's my second poem. My third, Prada, are you there Prada? I have a question for you. Oh, she stepped away. Okay, I'll just go into my third one. <laughs> This one I wrote a couple of years back and I recently tweaked it. This poem is called Dear Future Husband. Safe in your arms, our eyes connect, souls relate. I kiss you deeply, passions resound. Surrender to love, in its power we drown. I shiver as our tongues intertwine, your body pressed up against mine. Match perfectly as lovers, bonded as friends. Reminiscing on long conversations, intellectual and witty to no end. Attraction strong like a first love, yet we both know this was sent from above. Clothes fall like leaves in autumn. Caressing my body, I moan with pleasure. Senses heighten as juices drip down my thighs. I want more. You kiss my neck as flicks of your tongue surround my nipples. I crave you more as I grab your neck, grabbing your back. You got me so wet. <laughs> Warm like a tropical storm, aching, shaking. Baby, please don't make me wait. Our bodies at play. He moves close and I push him away, running my hands on your chest. As yours have wandered below my breast, teasing, squeezing, licking, biting, <laughs> sucking, one of my faves, except yours is perfect. With you, I'm not the same. You bring your mouth to meet her soaked in her glory. No games, no joke. I equally take the time to slip him into mine, casting the spell of forever. Your head drowns from dopamine highs. Je ne peux plus Qu'attendre, je dois te baiser. J'ai besoin de toi et tu me manques toujours. Alors on se fait l'amour plus en plus. 
toute la nuit et toute la journée. Arch back, wrap you in my legs close. You love me, as Maya said, in and out, <laughs> compose. Whispers of love fill my ears as tears stream down my cheeks. You grasp my cheeks, squeeze and play. I want these feelings to last always. As we rise and crash like tidal waves, our colors combine to produce new hues. Shades and flavors of love produce brilliant fruits of future beings. Our love is golden, whole and true. As I quiver and shake, yours moves and aches. Flapping my ass, I claw your back, flip me, riding you faster and harder at that, making me tremble as you shake too, as we hit the peak. Moan, so sweet, climax. I pray that God will never let us erase this memory of us basking in the glow, vulnerable, safe, intimacy. May we manifest what we've created between the sheets to be greater than a ratchet verse over a tight beat. Destiny, kismet, layered mad deep. We are the answer to each other's prayers. I will honor you forever. Just love me too. Don't know who you are, or maybe that's not true. Together we're great and we have work to do. Got curses to break, life to create, family to raise, keep Yah in our place. I look forward to when we relate, connect and learn each other on that first date, that Yah would confirm that you were worth the wait. And that's my third poem. Do I have time for one more? Prada, Prada girl. Marissa Prada, you there? Uh, yeah, you got actually, you have uh, like, at least according to my clock, you got like seven more minutes. So oh, you, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, hmm. I don't want to read this one, actually, so I'm not going to do that one. <laughs> I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to, because I, I feel like I need to just say this one too. Um, I know I read this at your last one, but I'm going to revisit this one again. I was going back and forth with this one and the other one. So I'm going to read This is America. This is America, the land of the free and home of the brave, a land that was built on mass unmarked graves of indigenous tribes and African slaves, whose bodies built monuments, raised crops, and white babies. Our ancestors shed blood on and for this land with little reward or recognition. This land is tainted with greed and driven by white supremacy. This is America where you can be free and ride off into happiness on the wheels of a dream. Unless you're brown, black, gay, a woman, queer, trans, an immigrant, or anything in between. Privilege wanes based on color and what's between your knees. Money drives everything. Capitalism is mean. Wealth is for the old boys and their pockets aligned with green. I dream of a place where people no longer fear race, nor threatened by the assertion of POCs in the workplace, where wages are fair and black women revered, where we change up our hair and get compliments, not stares where locks and kinks are not perceived as a threat and where I'm not treated differently for my Afro or silk press. Like vocal divas, black people have range, a variety in shades. We are not all the same. We sing in different keys of our morals, upbringing, values, and beliefs. Thus, I refuse to be the token spokesperson for our diverse culture. Willful ignorance is bliss to those whose lives were never endangered and livelihood unopposed. I'm tired of faking the funk and tap dancing to please various energies who truly don't care for me. And there's not a move of justice in sight when the terrorist skin is snow white. They travel with the seven dwarfs, insanity, privilege, hate, entitlement, apathy, unconscious bias, and greed. 
Whites often have the luxury of being arrested alive, yet unarmed black and brown folks always seem to die. We can't breathe, we can't breathe, we can't breathe, nor protest peacefully without media inaccuracy or militant proximity. Black lives are on mute, just shadows and figures as if we're dancing in the dark, like house and field. <laughs> we cannot be silent. We must stand up and shout, raise your voice and cry out. The time is now, we cannot haste. Things have to change or the same will remain. This is America and it is quickly going down the drain. So may God and the ancestors have mercy on our names as we cry out and petition for revolutionary change. So as we move with love and liberty today, we demand justice for the Black lives unjustly claimed. Poem. Yeah, let's go, holy gosh. I just, I gotta just screen that out because yeah, anyways, keep going. <laughs> Thanks y'all. Was that it or do you have one more? Oh, you, you want one more? I have a short one. I have a short one. She's a bit light. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got to tell you, like, Holly Gouge's energy is infectious, y'all. So if you're not smiling at the end of this set, I don't know what to tell you. This one does not have a title. I really believe I wasn't popping. Man, one poor decision or various emotional outbursts doesn't define myself or my worth. Poem. God damn, let's go. Y'all unmute your mics. Give it up for our second featured reader tonight. The one and only Holly Goosh. It's like Google without the L. That's how I remember it, right? Uh, that is how she introduced herself in Neo last year. And that's how I remember it. I think I remember even the first day you were there. Uh, and I remember reading, uh, hearing you read and it was just amazing. Um, I was like, oh, we gotta get this woman. <laughs> we gotta get her. <laughs> She's great. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Holly, for coming. Don't forget uh, her cash app and Venmo is Holly, H-O-L-Z, the number seven. If you do not have Venmo or cash app, then reach out to us uh, and let us know. Uh, for those who are just joining us, um, we do ask that, that you just uh, tip the feature something. Uh, sometimes we feel like we have to do a lot and we have to do everything and it's just impossible for us to do everything all the time. But there's 14 people in the room. If everyone put, you know, two, three, four bucks into her cash app or into her Venmo, you know, buy her a gallon of gas, right? Uh, or, or, well, she's in Brooklyn. Fuck, she might not have a car. We, we don't know. She could have a car. She, she really needs gas then. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe to put 30 bucks in her cash app, buy her, buy her a train ticket for the week or whatever, you know, uh, let's just not do, yeah, the Metro card, right? Don't, let's not do nothing. Every little bit counts. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm not going to send Holly Goosh $3. It's fucking cheap. You're fucking wrong. Please do it. Uh, if everyone who said that actually sent the cash, uh, these artists would not be starving. And I, I, you know, I'm not saying that they're starving, but they just, they definitely are, are going to need something for tonight's performances. Uh, the preparation, the writing, the energy, the time, all of that is worthy of something. So just don't do nothing. The cash app is Holly, H O L L Y, Holes. H-O-L-Z and the number seven. So here I'll put it in. This is Cash App and Venmo. Holly, H-O-L-Z and the number seven. Uh, that is the Cash App and Venmo. If you only have PayPal, reach out to us, let us know uh, and we can figure something else out. Unmesh Mohikar is in the room, y'all. I woke up with that man this morning and now he's waking up with me. <laughs> I love it when he comes by the word is right. Uh, Unmesh, would you, <clears throat> excuse me, would you like to read it on the open mic list tonight? Yes, All right, yes. So, so uh, last call for open mic list. If anyone else would like to read, uh, drop your name in the chat. If I missed you earlier, um, then uh, let me know, please. Okay, so we, we've got Marianne, we have Sophia, and we have Unmesh uh, to finish us out tonight. Uh, Versatile Vixen is in the house. What is going on? If anyone else wants to read, let me know. 
Uh, we're going by. Thanks, Lizzie. Thanks so much for coming. For those of you who missed it, uh, the Out Loud show that will be, uh, it's the first Sunday of the month, uh, hosted by Shaki G and Jacob R. Moses. This upcoming show, they're going to be uh, hosting Sabrina Benaim and her <clears throat> her point of view and her discussions on mental health in the LGBTQ community. So please, please um, do that. Catch up with more money exchange system. Yeah, well, but that's okay, right? We we gotta exchange money, right? When we're when we're wanting to send tips and stuff. All right, uh, Marianne, Sophia, Unmesh, that is my open mic list tonight. Are you ready, Miss Marianne? Yes. I have a song and a poem. This uh, song is called Take a Walk With Me. I uh, started February 15th, 1997. I finished it February 18th, 1997. Come on, baby, take a walk with me. Oh, baby, I need your company. Want you by my side, and that's no lie. Oh, come on, darling, I need your love. Oh, it's love, yeah, you should know. Wait, please, I'm up to take my hand and share some time with me. Come on, baby, take a walk with me. Oh, baby, I need your company. Want you by my side and that's no lie. Oh, come on, darling, I need your love. Want to be with you always. Come on, baby, you should know we were meant for each other. Take a stroll with me. Come on, baby, take a walk with me. Oh, baby, I need your company. Want you by my side, and that's no lie. Oh, come on, darling, I need your love. Please take a walk with me. Okay. Now this poem I'm going to read is called I'm Scared I Wrote on the 19th of this month. I'm scared for my husband. I'm scared he will end up dying on me. He was told in 10 to 15 years, he will need heart valve replacements or he will die. He was born with a birth defect where he was born with only two heart valves instead of three. He was told he will need to get echocardiograms done every year. He was told his smoking is progressing it faster. He was not pushed to quit smoking though by the doctor. Doctor, he said, thought what nicely said. He also has calcification as well. I'm scared my husband won't be around. I'm scared that I will lose him. I'm totally scared. I have to take it one day at a time right now. I have to hope for the better. Yes, Marianne. Yes, yes, yes. And that's totally valid to be afraid for him. And yep. I, I'm glad though that he's under the care of a physician and that they can monitor him with EKGs and all of that good stuff. And I'm sending so much love and healing energy for all, all of you. <clears throat> it's, it can be very scary, I imagine. And yeah. just you have a community around you okay yep. so if you need us or or anything were to happen just know you can lean on us and and we got you okay okay all right thanks we call marianne peterson mystery no cheese or miss matter of fact she does have the best opening lines of any poet i know all right moving on we have poet sophia falco yes you must use all three names if you're going to introduce her properly and then we'll finish up tonight with unmesh mohitkar are you ready so poet sophia falco I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I don't know. Oh gosh. Okay. Yes, I don't think. You got to say, yes, I'm ready. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm ready. It's been a long day, but I'm ready. Um, let's see. I don't think I've read this one before about the the fair, the cotton candy. Okay. Well, let's debut it. I don't think I did. So, anyways, it's titled Snapshots. Okay snapshots i solemnly refuted this is not fair the turning of a ferris wheel oh he loved candy and isn't it dandy this pretending of a pretentious happiness frivolous falsified fairy floss not caressing sugar sticky spaces between my fingers granules blue fingerprints on a white tube it wasn't a blue cloud as you claimed, that would defeat the purpose of a cloud while I'm way below cloud nine, invisibility. As I snap the cardboard in half, as I snap back, don't use those nonsensical metaphors when I can make them better than you. But you proceeded, pressing the button for the cotton candy machine anyways. I did not point up above to the eyeless dog in the shape of a cloud, but as I 
held this leash in my right hand that could have attached to a collar no longer with no body to put on. Nobody is listening, but the turning of time, the brittle cloud wallpaper starting to get undone on the edges with sheer white now yellowing, bright blue fading away, materials thinner, thus disintegrating yet. Those toy clowns were dressed in dresses. Ageless witnesses on the white wicker dresser, timeless as time ran out as the wicked color of the wall was revealed as I peeled the paper away. Thank you. That's the first poem. Ooh, I, I, I want to see what's underneath it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I, I want to peel it too. Yeah. That would be oh. a, that would be a really sick book cover. The wicked color of the wall was revealed. But I didn't tell you what color the wicked color was. But like maybe the fingers that are pe peeling back, maybe it's like burning it under the fingers, like with some smoke and like, mm. that would be really cool. Okay. I have one more poem for tonight, but that was a new, that was a new one about the, the cotton candy. Um... Okay, this one's titled Hours. Um, okay, one, knowing my tears were trapped, droplets not born into existence, unlike me. She placed the tangible on top of the intangible, performing the impossible, lending a helping hand to me, allowing me to wrap my head around it. Well, I had to wrap my writing hand with athletic tape to cover up injured blood vessels. Another joke, you're a tree puncher, not a tree hugger. Not seeing the reasons why I hit the trees, not deserving of this damage so damn hard. Two, deep sorrow grew downwards like the roots of the weeping willow tree Then this tree no longer a tree instead with fragmented branches falling into the river, becoming driftwood without making a splash, whereas we got our feet wet into the unknown, the answer became closer together in such a finite and infinite dose of time. I used to fear closeness. She who saw all of me taught me these possibilities like the first pepper grown in outer space. Three, she would twirl swirl her love heat as i chopped up the jalapenos our time together timeless unlike a shooting star burning up my heart she asked me what's wrong as she saw through the facade of this exterior of the outline of this body the outline of these eyes it was her who saw the tears that were guarded for many years this connection of our heart spaces bridged together like a swirling of yellow butterflies going upward flying Thank you. Let's go. Y'all, I need your mics. <laughs> give it up for Poe Sophia Falco. <laughs> Woo! Uh, hey, very uh, poetic use of words. <laughs> She's new book out. Y'all buy her new book. I need coming new out. Book. It's coming out soon. Hopefully, a month's time. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, it's she's lovely. Her work is lovely. Please, please, please uh, support these authors uh, and these artists. Uh, Unmesh Mohikar is, is not any exception, right? He does an incredible open mic. It's Sunday morning, um, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, it is amazing. Uh, if you, so if you want to go to India, uh, and really you're also pulling in Malaysia and Europe and all, all kinds of other places, uh, so it's an incredible way to start your Saturday morning. Uh, he is a father. <laughs> He's a poet. He's an author. His book, Light Shadow Live, is a great book. Uh, he is a breakout subway poet artist. Uh, he likes or train on the train. He does uh, poetry on the train, which is awesome. Um, and he loves farmers and, and eats vegetables. <laughs> so well, please don't be at your mics. Give it up for Unmesh Mohikar. Woo, woo, woo. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Marisha. That was a wonderful introduction. I have recorded it. So. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, this is a new poem which I wrote, I think, day before yesterday. It's about bed bugs. My question today is, are you feeling itchy today? One of the greatest invention of God is small microscopic bedbugs. 
They have everything which a gorilla fighter needs. They hide in places you cannot even think of in motels, five-star hotels, in your bed, or in the chair you are sitting right now. They don't differentiate unlike human beings. They treat all human beings as equals, just a bat filled with red blood. Whole world is a pool of blood on their plate. Their battlefield is your bed, but they don't sleep on it. One should never sleep at work. They are very, very professional. They can be inside the crevices of your bed. In fact, they can hide on the wall just waiting for the nightfall. When the enemy is asleep, they just suck the enemy's blood out using the incremental method. They don't drink all the blood at once like the dumb, bloodthirsty Dracula. They preserve their prey for the next day. They just keep on sucking off their innocent, unaware and ignorant prey. Their stealth can put the world's greatest secret service to shame. The difference is they never fail in their mission. They know power is in numbers. They are not only interested in their food, they reproduce like jungle fire. Just imagine drinking blood in the night and having sex in the day. They reproduce in such a way that they change the demography of the house. The house owner feels lonely. Thanks God, they are not voters. The bedbugs will win a landslide victory. Human extinction might be triggered by the bedbugs one day. Killing the bedbugs is declaring war against yourself. Finding Dracula was easy. He just go to his castle and fight. Or he comes to your house uninvited. Here the enemy's castle is your house. You destroy enemy's fort. You are destroying your house. The pest control people take the atomic route. Boom, boom. Take no prisoners. They just spray the smelly pesticide or bed bug spray all over the house, turning the house upside down. It is like burning the jungle to kill a rabbit. Still not a sure short way. A small mistake by them. And the bedbugs rise from the ashes like the phoenix to attack their enemy with full gusto. But my question is, are you feeling itchy today? Are you feeling itchy today? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Damn it! Damn it, it Ah! No, we're going to die. We're all going to die. <laughs> Fuck it, burn the jungle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God, you guys are future bikes. Give it up. <laughs> Y'all, like, straight up, that's genius to talk about something so gross <laughs> and to like make us visibly you know to to alter our sensations but make it like so happy and wonderful like i <laughs> oh my god oh my god Unmesh, it was brilliant thank you brilliant. Uh, you got to do a video of that. It'll go viral. Uh, please do. <laughs> do a video of that. Oh, it's awesome. Thank you so much for coming by and and reading, um, even though it was about bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Right. I feel itchy now. Yes. Spoken word is supposed to, to make you feel some sort of way. I wasn't thinking itchy, but it works, right? Um, <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna have trouble sleeping now. All right, but thank you all so very much for an incredible, incredible show. Uh, let's give it up one more time for our featured readers tonight, Erica Floyd and Holly Gouge, everyone. 
these women were powerhouses. Like I'm all itchy now. These women are powerhouses. I'm uh, so excited to have come across them and, and meet them. If you're not following them, please do so. If you have not had a chance to send Erica and Holly a tip yet, please do so. Uh, Holly Gouge's uh, Venmo and Cash App is Holly, H-O-L-D, the number seven. Uh, Erica's Cash App is K-Y-T-T, gets paid. Uh, all of that is on our Facebook events page for tonight. Uh, if you don't have that, just send a couple bucks, two, three, four bucks, anything you, you got that you can spare. Buy him a, a tank of gas, buy him a cup of coffee. Just don't do nothing. Uh, just do something, right? Yeah. Shocky, you could totally send them care pack, a care pack of coffee. I used to do that. All right. Uh, but that's, uh, that is it for tonight. Um, don't forget, we have uh, next uh, Saturday is the um, uh, Rocky Horror Poetry Show. So it's our Halloween show. The following Saturday is Poetry in a Movie Night. We're going to be featuring um, one of two movies. So you get a vote in the room. We have A Nightmare on Elm Street versus Hocus Pocus. And then the following Saturday, we have Stephen Blaine in the house here uh, to do some music. We've got our anniversary show. We've got um, the Friendsgiving and we've got the New Year's Eve show. Lots of things coming up here at The Word is Right. Go to the events page. You can find everything there. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Please like, share, subscribe, and follow to everything that we're doing. If you'd like to get on our email list, uh, drop us a line and we'll add you to that email list as well. All right. Otherwise, let's do our, our toast for the evening as I thank all of you for being here, as I thank you for your time and your love and your energy. Grab a glass. Here we go. Here's to health and your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain. For we may or may not ever all be here again. This has been the world, the word is rights, double feature open mic featuring Erica Floyd and Holly Goosh. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. I will see you all next time. Peace.